Hello everyone and welcome to Saturday Night Music Club number 35. I'm Brett. I'm Sarah. Brent. Desiree. Talia. DPJ. <laughs> James. Kate. And Robert and Jonathan cannot make it with us because Jonathan is on a cruise with Robert. <laughs> the Caribbean. Wow. So, so tonight's theme is one of your favorite albums from two, 2016 so far. And we're going to start things off with trivia, and we're actually doing team trivia. So Sarah and I are going to alternate questions. Brent and Desiree are one team. Talia and her partner, Jesse, are one team. My partner. And James and Kate are one team. Partner. So here we go. I'm going to start things off. The first question goes to Brent and Desiree. All right. Good luck. Influenced by African and European influences, this country developed the musical styles known as samba, Bossa Nova and Pagode, among others. Brazil? Two points for Desiree. Country? I actually knew that one. You like that one, right? Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was clever. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was coincidental that yeah. I went to you guys. All right. Jesse and Talia, Sarah. Ah. Jesse and Talia. Dana Owens is the real name of this rapper slash actress. What is it? Dana Owens. Is the real name of this rapper slash actress? Queen Latifah. No! Oh, hey. 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 You guys aren't fired. I was not excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, right. James and Kate. All right, here's a, here's a challenging one. James and Kate, We're, listen really carefully on this one. Artists become eligible for induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 25 years after the release of their debut album. In 1986, the very first year, 10 artists were inducted into the Rock and Hall of Fame. Name three of them. What? <laughs> <laughs> Led Zeppelin. So their debut came out in 1961 is what you're saying. Okay. No, no. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're not very good at math. <laughs> <laughs> so, Beatles. Okay, you got it. Beat Beach Boys. There's two. Elvis. You're wrong. Okay. <laughs> Brent Desert. Elvis. Buddy Holly. And Roy Orbison. If there was Roy Oh, so if Roy Orbison. Kate's actually a really big Roy Orbison fan. Okay, that has nothing to do with it. Okay, <laughs> Jesse and Talia. Three of the ten. <clears throat> the Beatles, Elvis, and... The... Three, <laughs> two... Ding, ding. No, wait, wait, it's, it's the, you know... Um, Keyboard or, cat? were Elvis, James Brown, Little oh. Richard, Fats Domino, Ray Charles, Chuck Berry, Sam Cooke, Everly Brothers, bro Everly Brothers, Buddy Holly, and Jerry Lee Lewis. So good job, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a hard one, but you have to think the first year they got to be yeah. like huge. Yeah, they got to like, had to be like 50. Yeah, and the Beatles' first record came out in 63, uh, so so that's why they weren't in there. And a tough one. Yeah. Okay, Sarah, uh, we're, this one's going to Brent and Desiree. Guys, Guns N' Roses reunited in 2016 with three members of their classic Appetite for Destruction lineup, Axl Rose, Slash, and oh. Duff McKagan. And most recently, a few appearances by drummer Steven Adler. Who was the fifth member of that Appetite era lineup? <laughs> Desiree. Desiree. Who was this? I don't know. I don't know either. All right, passing it on. Who are the ones that were that listed again? I'm sorry. It's everybody but the other guitar player. Axel Slash, Duff <laughs> yeah. McKagan, yeah. Steven Adler. Steven Who Adler. was the fifth? Who was the other guitar player? Yes. 
James is chomping at the bit. <laughs> you have to know this. Well, is it Izzy? But I could be wrong. Is that your answer? Izzy Stradlin. Izzy Stradlin. <laughs> One point. <laughs> All right. That yeah. takes us over to Jesse and Talia. <clears throat> Good one here. <laughs> what are the first names of the five Jacksons that make up the Jackson Five? Why are they getting all the black questions? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! All right, we have five names. Michael, Tito, Jermaine. <laughs> Those are the ones everyone's getting. Yeah, I'm choked after that. None of the girls are in there, right? No. No, not yet. Did you say Jethro? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, easy. Um, uh, 
Yeah, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't get that one, you should have been slapped. Slap. You're crazy. You're going to have to You should have been slapped. You know? All right, uh, Brent Desert gets the last one. Oh, final question. Yeah. This is a good one. This is a really good one. Give me the first names of all five members of New Kids on the Block. Oh, <laughs> that was <one's> easy. <laughs> I was hoping Desiree was going to get it. Uh, Jordan. Yes. Uh, Stop. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, um, god, uh, Donnie, oh, uh, oh my god, <laughs> we need two more, two more, I'm trying two to more. picture their faces, so who do we have so far, Jordan, Donnie, Joey, Joey, Danny, one more, one more, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jesse over there. What? How the hell does he know this? <laughs> One more. You got five uh, seconds. Did you already say the, the Wahlberg kid? Yeah. You already did. Yeah. All right. Three. Oh, shoot. Two. I don't one. Know. All right. Gee, all five. No Go, Jesse. Go for it. I forget already. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. You got it. Take some Party. time. Oh, that was it. Uh, is that your answer? Well, okay. It's that's no, fine. It's not, it's not, it's not, Jordan, it's not. Donnie. Yeah, it wasn't Mark. No, he was no. <laughs> Yeah, that's his brother. Uh, yeah, yeah that's why I said she get the wall. I don't know what that was. Mark was in it in the beginning. Uh, he he was. quit. Mark was. Mark, 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 all five. Here we go. Joey, Jordan, Jesse, Mike, Donnie. <laughs> Isn't it Mike? Just Mike. Let's talk about this before. That's the old kids on the block. Yeah, Mikey from the block. Mikey. No, Mike. No, Mikey. Mikey from the block. Okay. Jordan, Joey, Donnie, Danny, and Jonathan. 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 Jordan or brothers. Yeah, who's Jonathan? He was the like random looking one. Like Salisbury? He was a tall. John <laughs> Salisbury? The new kid on the block? Oh, yeah, they get the hairy one. <laughs> was he like far in the back where nobody could see him? He was nobody else. <laughs> Alright, so it's kind of the scores. Brent, Desiree, what's your point? We have five. Jesse, tell you. Two? We had two. How many? Five. Oh, tie. Oh. Okay. Did you make a tie for that? I did, but I'm going to make one up off the top of my head. Okay. Here we go. Wait, how are we going to do this? First person to answer? First, first, person, to, first person to answer. Okay. All right. From 1987. Shit. Who sang? She's like the wind. Oh! 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 Patrick Yeah. <laughs> James. I'll go James all ooh, ooh, but then it doesn't even say Kate's all. Because I was so excited because I knew it. So James, James. This is why we're a good couple. All right. This is why we're getting James married. James, you may know that number ever. Okay, so as I mentioned before, our theme for tonight is one of your favorite albums from this year, 2016. I brought Eagles, their second album, Oolages. Yeah. Sarah, what did you think of Eagles? I love this album. It's one of my favorite of this year. Um, so I gave it a four. Um, it's their second release and it's very reminiscent of The Cure and has a whole post punk vibe with nice bass lines. And yeah, I've listened to it several times. All right, Brent. So when Brett said he was bringing the Eagles, I was really, I was really excited. expecting something different. I was, I was partly disappointed, partly excited, and then I heard AFI mixed with The Cure. Oh, that's, that's what I heard. I heard a couple of songs that had some Davey Havoc like vocals where he's not screaming but more singing, mm -hmm. and uh, some definite Cure, definite Cure, yeah. Cure influences, and, <coughs> and I was like, this isn't The Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> and I was this really is a new kid in town. Yeah, this is when I was really disappointed, and I was <laughs> like, and then I was like, well, this is better than the Eagles, so I gave it a two. All right, so Desiree, what'd you think of the Eagles? Um, I liked it, but it kind of was 
I mean, I, I got like kind of goth from it. Oh, okay. So right. I probably, from the cure, that's probably what I was thinking too. I gave it a two. All right. Tell you. Oh, I loved it. Um, I've seen them live. I got to see them open for a ride last year. It was pretty awesome. We. We. That's true. <laughs> Tell you, partner. <laughs> partner. Domestic partner. I love the driving bass lines. I love the pouty bruce vocals. There's really nothing I don't like about it. So good. We're all the way. Jesse. Um so they're actually pretty amazing. I love their debut. This one actually yes. kind of stuff it up a little bit. There's something there is like a totally different feeling about it, but also there's not like a real departure from their <coughs> sound. So I gave this record a four. Cool. Love it. James Todd. I'll let the ladies speak before me. We're uh, going in order. Just go. Yeah, just go. <laughs> Mess with the <laughs> Yeah, listen, listen. Why are you killing things? So, uh. <laughs> you think about Joe Walsh. Nice and loud to everyone. Are you? So, what? What? No. Alright. <clears throat> so, I agree with pretty much everybody that's on the couch right now. I am also. It's the most people I have on this couch, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I also thought it kind of sound his vocals kind of sound kind of Robert Smithian. Um, the music was kind of like a Cure Smith like Smithian. musicality. Smithian. <laughs> with uh, with harder drumming that felt as if it was an animal had become a complete <coughs> phenomenon. So uh, I gave it a three. That was like some of the best discourse you've ever given on a review. Well, I kind of true. I'm a new man. man. Yeah. I'm engaged now. I'm a new man. Let's hear it for James and Kate. <laughs> Woo! Spring break! <laughs> Two weddings next year. <laughs> Maybe Two three. Weddings Maybe three. Three. <laughs> three. <laughs> Two and a half. Three, three. weddings in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kate, what do you think of Eagles? I liked it. I agree with everybody else.
the first half of the album. Um, I liked it, but it didn't really rock me, which I wish it would have. And I do love Slow Dive and Mudway, so I don't like the editors, though. Oh, I give it's it a three. Not, uh, it's just. Kate, what'd Whoa. you think of Minor Victory? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Eagles. <laughs> it's not the Eagles, it's just the Eagles. <laughs> Alright, Kate, Minor Victory. I'm afraid of behaving now. That's the old name for something. Um, I, just, I put a three. I thought I liked it. It was mellow. I mean, it wasn't anything necessarily like, grabbing my attention, but I put it on. Excellent. Uh, yeah, this was also one of my favorite albums of 2016 also. Uh, Scattered Ashes, I think, is like the song of the year. I just think that's so... That, I, that drawing's a drawing of the year. Yes. <laughs> that song is so incredible, and the music video for it with the cats. <laughs> it, it's great. Uh, laser cats. Yes, Laser cat Cats. Cape? It's my signature guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> the album also has, uh, Scattered Ashes has the, the guy from Twilight Sad as a guest vocalist. And there is one song that's kind of the odd track on the album, which we were discussing, which has Mark Kozilek. It's like this weird spoken word, back and forth kind of love story going on. And it kind of is really out of place when it's over. That was another. Okay, it's on the second yeah, side. And when it's over, you're like, okay, back to the regular program, because it's just like so jarring. But, uh, I mean, it's a four. So, yeah, it's a great album. So, uh, Sarah, you ended up scoring a total of a 23. Great job. Brent. Okay. Yes, excellent job. So I brought the Kyle Rhythm and Steel Band. The album's called 55. Basically, it's a rhythm and steel band doing cover songs of hip-hop songs like Jay-Z's P.I.M.P. There's Jungle Fever, Scorpio. Um, there's no lyrics, no, no vocals. It's just the instrumentals. So. It's a fun little record. Desiree, what'd you think? I loved it. I mean, I like stuff like that. It's just really, I mean, it's fun. I give it a three. Cool. I like it. Toy. I thought it was good stuff. I like the steel drum. Um, it was kind of, I wrote good uh, foot tapping and head nodding too. Hmm. So I give it a three. Right on. Jesse, what'd you think? <clears throat> Well, for the for bring cheese burglar, <laughs> I wrote I wanted to make a porno right away in the style of <laughs> Little Mermaid. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I, I kind of I give this a four. Oh wow! Apparently, but um, <laughs> it was I enjoyed it, but I don't think it's something that I would like throw on like routinely unless I was ready to. Make a baby. 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 Make a um, I also thought it was perfect wedding by the lake music, and uh, the um, the best part, pretty much from the side that Brent had played, was uh, their uh, instrumental cover of uh, PIMP by Fifty Cent. Oh, I gave it a three. Yeah, that's Fifty Cent. Is that Fifty Cent? C? No, PIMP is Fifty Cent. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's, right. Heard about that's right. That's yeah, right. I said it wrong. Check. Good job. I liked it, like everybody else did. Good job. Transported. Like, I felt like I was at a beach dance party or something. So it's funny that you said wedding. Wedding. I'll spray you to play at your wedding. Uh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. already going to look for it. Like, you did three. three. All right, yeah. since you'll have it. Tight, super tight bass lines, savvy percussion break, steel drum. It kind of reminded me of the time that Jesse was on tour as the water boy for Good Charlotte <laughs> and got thrown off the tour. They actually got thrown out of Luby's buffet. I gave it a two. Sarah. I gave it a three. Um, I really enjoyed the funky calypso feel, steel drums, and I really enjoyed it as well. All right, Brent, you ended up scoring a 21. Good job. Yeah, you're legal. Legal! <laughs> Desiree, what did you bring? Okay, so, <laughs> I brought Kiara, it's a new album. She's pretty young, it's just like indie pop music. Super chill. Cool. Tell you, Kiara, what do you think? 
I thought her vocals were really pretty, and there were times that reminded me of backwards guitar, which I thought was kind of The really vocals reminded backwards guitar? Yeah. Nice there was some guitar. effect or something going on. And I thought that it was good getting uh, ready to go out with music, so I'd pop that on, put on some makeup, and get cute to go out. Yeah, Jesse? Give it a three. Um, for little Ray Ray, I'm not really sure about this record. I just wrote that it was good enough to hear once. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was good enough to hear once. Um, but now that I think about it, I think, yeah, maybe I do kind of like it. I gave it a two, but if I were to listen to it again, maybe I'd like it more. Usually when I get cute to go out, I, <laughs> I like to throw on Journey and play a midnight train. But that's just a midnight sad. train. It really gets me going, you know. Like, Don't stop <laughs> Going to the I'll be easy to put it on a lot. No, it's But you know, that's it. Why do you know that? But is it the Shmeese in my face? Okay, Chad, don't listen to me now. Our state is downtown. John Train? Is that Rod Stewart? Rod Stewart covered Tom Waits, right? I think so. Downtown Train? Was that a Tom Waits song? Yeah. Rod Stewart did a cover? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What a lovely downtown train. Okay, James. So, uh, I think Jesse, if he wants to listen to it again, he can probably come over to my house because I'm basically going to buy this album. I think it was, was the good. best album that's been played pretty much. It's It ranks up in the top three best albums that have ever been played on uh, Brett's uh, turntable. Better than that Russian album that Robert brought. That was the worst. Top three album best ever. albums ever played on Brent's, or Brett's turntable. Um, I wrote a... Uh, I liked everything that uh it kind of if you want to know musically what I thought it sounded like it kind of sounded like a more upbeat version of Twigs which Brett called what did you call uh, I don't know Supper for Kanye meets Tinashe always for Kanye always for Kanye yeah. always I give it a four it changed my life oh. <laughs> Kate what do you think I'm of buying this album uh, Ray 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 well, she just like that's pretty dope. Yeah, I liked it. I'll buy it. Change our lives. It, it was <laughs> obvious from. So before we play a record, <laughs> twenty bucks. Before we play a record, we introduce it, which is a little introduction. And when when uh, little Ray Ray introduced this record, I just said James is gonna order this. It's just obvious from the description. Uh, it was a super crisp recording. The like reverb sounds. It was just so nice on the vocals. Um, I think Tully really described it well with the backwards guitar vocals. A comparison. Um, great bass lines. Her voice is excellent. Definitely, uh, I got the the um, throw of FKA Twigs. Also, I give it a two. I really enjoy it. Sarah, I enjoyed it as well. I, I double. But you gave it a two when you really enjoyed it. Sorry, I just saw. His, <laughs> I just heard his number and what he said. Yeah, two. He's tough. <laughs> He's tough. Right. Sarah, He's sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, I also gave it a two, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was also reminiscent of FK Twigs and maybe the likes of Banks, that kind of female Ooh, electronica R and B. I think I look forward to hearing more from her. She's super young, and I think maybe that's why I gave it a two because it wasn't like. Fully mature sounding, for yeah. lack of a better description, and that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I liked it. I look forward to hearing more from her. You know what I liked time. about right. it was the really sparse drum programming and like the yeah, effects on the, the snare. Yeah, the yeah. snare had a really cool. Brent, well, Brent, what would you give your uh, wife's record? I gave Lil Ray Ray a two. Also, <laughs> I thought this had some some good mall. Sounding breakaway pop hits on it. I think I think that she could go far with mall music. I think if you walk into like rave or like Charlotte Char 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 Rouge Char or something like that, you're gonna hear this song. You're gonna hear one of these songs like over the intercom playing. It needs to be on a commercial. Would you hear it in industrial? Think she needs to be on no, you wouldn't hear this in industrial. Okay, you so would hear this. Probably an industrial. Really? I right. think so. Would you hear this at Urban Outfitters? You would hear this at Urban Outfitters since you can only buy it at Urban Outfitters. You can only get. And guess what? what I'm going tomorrow at 11 a.m. No, you would hear this at K-Mo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So, what, uh, what, so what would you score for, uh, for Little Ray Ray? Little Ray Ray got two. All right, Little Ray Ray, you scored a 19. That's a very commendable. 
four. Yay. You're in the James League. Sally, what you bring tonight? <laughs> well, I brought Elliot Sumner's information and this album I'm pretty much obsessed with. I play it all the time. I got to see her with Jesse recently at Crescent Ballroom. Small crowd, but she's the raw, you know, energy she had, passionate. I love her vocals. I just love this album. Alright, Jesse. Um that one. You don't need a favorite for that. Um, I really love this album, that's why I bought it. When we went to see her, I was probably more excited about seeing her that week than... Who was the other show we saw? I don't even remember it. It kind of overshadowed the other show that we went they to. They see so week. many shows. M83. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was definitely better than M83. M83? Yeah, M83. It was way better than that. Her, the, the rawness of her stage presence, like she really kind of tore it up, especially during the last song on the album. It's called the Species, and she actually ended the night with that out with that song, and it was. I've never seen such a tiny crowd go so crazy for one song. Cool. What'd you score? I gave it a four. All right, James Todd, Ellen Sumner. <laughs> That's really interesting. So, uh, <laughs> we had a little bit of a conversation about this as it was playing. Heated conversation. <laughs> it wasn't that heated. It was about there medium was a couple heat of, on the stove, medium There might have been a it was like table or chilies. chair turned over. Medium high. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like... Simmer. Yeah. Braise. There's a little. So, uh, I don't know if anybody said it, because I can't really remember, because I'm losing my memory, but uh, it's Sting's daughter, and it's interesting, because as soon as you hear her voice, you're like, wait, is that Sting? And it's interesting how much she sounds exactly like her dad, because I don't sound like my mom, you know, like when I talk or even That's say. Good comparison. <laughs> it's yeah, just well, you sound like your mom a little. Your voice is actually a little higher than your mom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't sound like my mom. So it's weird that she. When sounds... you say that, you sound like your mom, though. Yeah, I do sound like my mom there. So <laughs> yeah. But it's just weird that she sounds like her dad a lot. But then there's other parts of her register of her voice that sound pretty good, and I think she needs to run with that more so than her dad sounding side of her voice. But uh, she's not her father, she's her father's daughter, and I give it a two. Kate, Elliot Summer. <laughs> I definitely need to write more notes when I listen, because I kind of forgot. She was drawing, <laughs> she was doodling. <laughs> You had a drawing on that Because <laughs> uh, your feelings are represented in that drawing, which equates to what score? It was good drawing music. I can give it a three. Oh, okay. I like the music more. I'm, yeah, oh, the music I'm was good. The music was really good, yeah. yeah. Uh, track two, I don't know the title of it, uh, really intense, emotional. I had this really long outro where it just kept going. It's good, great driving beat, anthemic keyboards. I gave it a three. Sarah. I also gave it a three, and I agree with you on track two. That is such a great kind of new wavy keyboard coming of age anthem. Um, but then after that's when I noticed she really sounded like Sting. Just her, just the vocal style wise, just her inflections. Um, I really noticed it there. But I look forward to hearing this album more. This was the first time that I've heard more than one song, so. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm at the beginning of this album. I really, I really liked it. Brent. So, this reminded me, this album's listening to the whole thing, reminded me of the time that Jesse and I were at the Circle K. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Jesse, do you want a soda? And he's like, no, but I'm going to get uh, a root beer. So, after we're sitting on the, on the curb drinking our, my soda and his root beer, and he's like, let's go to Hot Topic and get some eyeliner. And I was like, you don't need eyeliner guy line. right now. You need to, you know, I was like, you need just to get more hours at work and, and take care of your stuff. And he was like, no, I need some guy liner. And I was like, all right. So I just took him home. That's it. That's your story. <laughs> okay. There was more to that actually. What was your story? There was the rest. There was a two. Okay, Desiree. Uh, so I, I liked it a lot. I gave it a three. Um, it does sound like Sting, but I didn't really like Sting, so... Alright. Yeah. Talia, Talia, you scored um, a 20. Great job. Jess Araya. What'd you bring? I brought, um, this is actually one of my favorite records of the year. I brought Fear of Men, Fall Forever. 
That's well, the name of the night. That's the, I know. I know. James looks at me. I'm laughing over here. Yeah. But, but Jesse's just reiterating our theme. <laughs> the thing I love about this record is that they really didn't replicate any of their previous releases at all. And the, produ the production of it was something that, like, I know I mentioned it before when I introduced it earlier, but I, I really love it production of records, and especially when people do things completely wrong to make an album. And they did something kind of strange when they made this album, so I would commend them and I, I really James Todd. Love it. You <laughs> 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 oh, When I was listening, I thought I fell asleep and woke up to the same song playing on repeat. I did it, but it all still felt the same thing repeated. Um... <laughs> I gave it a three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were talking about like two score. <laughs> oh, that didn't equate to what I said. All right, Kate. It's like a sympathy vote. <laughs> yeah. no, At least it wasn't a revenge grade. That's offensive. At least it wasn't a revenge grade. It's true. He's given those. He's All right, yeah. Kate. Uh, well, Jesse wanted me to say it was my favorite album of the night, so I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this album. I, I just haven't listened to it enough the first half of the year since it came out. Um, there's that one song. What is what's the uh, what's the title of that one? Uh-huh. No, it's a different one. Is it the title? Sane. Yes, Sane. That's Sane. the one. Sane. Play. Yes. That's a great track. It's um, I really love the sound of her vocals. We saw them. They opened for Pains of the Impure at Heart. And she actually, the singer, performed in Pains of Pure at Heart. She played yeah, keyboards and sang backing vocals, right? Yeah, I like them, and I like this album. I gave it a three. Sarah? I actually gave this album a four. I really enjoy it. It came out not too long ago. She has just such sweet vocals, and like Jesse said, compared to their previous album, which I found to be really orchestral, this doesn't have those elements, but they still have the same type of melodic formula throughout the songs. I look forward to listening to it more. Yeah, it's really barren and empty, so yeah. I like it. Brent? Alright, so when Jesse said there was more to the story from Talia's record, there it actually is. So after I dropped Jesse oh. off, he <laughs> called me and was like, okay, if you don't come get me to go get Guy Liner, then I'm not going to let you listen to this record. So I was like, fine. So I came back, he put this record on, on the way to Hot Topic. The vinyl in the car, you played it. Yes, on a portable. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, there's like a certain good darkness to this that you really should get the guy liner for. <laughs> and so we went there, and instead of getting guy liner, he got hot pink Hello Kitty lip gloss. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Which yeah. Is like wearing a lip gloss. Right I'm wearing it. Anyway. Which he is wearing right now. It's a good color. Decent yeah. Color. Uh, so uh, <laughs> hearing this before with that, I gave it a three. Okay. Desert, what do you think? Uh, so this is actually my favorite of the night. <laughs> really? Yes. Girl. Um, I, I just like that kind of music. I, I did give it a three, three but I'd probably <laughs> give it a three and a half if I could. <laughs> you got the wrong score sheet. You can give it a four. Yeah. Give it a four. I mean, I could give it a four, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, tell me what you think of your partner's <laughs> record. My partner's record. partner. Well, I think it kind of sounded like the cranberries with PMS, but in the best way possible. Cranberries. <laughs> cranberries with PMS. Well, I just mean because it's like she's going, like, clearly going through a heartbreak, like some kind of breakup, and it's just really that stark, just <laughs> that emptiness you feel when a relationship ends. So I thought they really encapsulated that Ain't well. Than zombie. What do you think? <laughs> no, you you hit that because when I first heard that track, saying I thought of Dolores yeah. Riordan, Riordan. Rir Rir um, and I was trying to think of that name of, the, of who it reminded me of in, in this, tonight when I was giving my little discourse, and it was Grammar. So. But I, I love the What's that? Do you think they had a little linger? A little. I don't know, it's all dreams, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we're going to see them on Wednesday, so I can't wait, because they're just really awesome. But... Jesse, uh, you are, uh, Jesse, your favorite men record, 23. Whoa. Great job. 
what do you what is fear of men like put into like fear, a phobia it, it is a phobia she's really intrigued by certain phobias and there's a latin name for fear of men but she it? couldn't go by that because it didn't make any sense nobody didn't know what it was so she actually just went under fear of men it, she actually has obsessions with certain phobias does she have a racket with tyria phobia fear of spiders fear of the fear of having people are sick to the roof of your mouth. No. Oh, we're we're learning a lot of stuff tonight. <laughs> <laughs> James Town, what record did you break? I actually didn't bring a record. I brought an album. Have <laughs> yeah, fun, <funny>. go. <laughs> Sorry. I brought Anderson Pack, uh, Malibu. This is uh, this is one of my favorite albums of the year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> He's played previously on uh, the Compton soundtrack, and he also played on um, the last uh, game documentary album. And uh, he's currently on the Schoolboy Q album. Okay, what did you think of uh, your fiance's record? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I put a four. Uh, it kind of reminds me, like his voice, his rap kind of reminds me of Kendrick Lamar. I kind of like that raspiness. It reminded, actually reminded me of Blue Vegas Mambo series, five, six, and seven. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> it was like the soundtrack of James's numb feed situation, <laughs> rub it up dub. I give it a two. <laughs> it actually is the soundtrack of Sarah. Blue V, pretty much. I just, I can't even follow that. Um, <laughs> I, I know, I, I didn't write what much. That word? <laughs> yeah, what is that word? Peanut butter? Peanut butter? Yeah, peanut just, butter? It's, 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 no, I know. It's peanut butter. Peanut butter wolf? It, it, it was nice background music. I just, it's just not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> it's, it's good car driving music. Yeah. All right, so your score was a. It was a two. All right, Brent. That was a courtesy PB. score. <laughs> Mine was two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I was I was looking on the, the album cover there, and once I got to track three, Madlib actually did the produ production and also the beats for that track, and that track pretty much kills it. I'm not a huge fan of his voice. I don't think it's quite as cool as Kendrick Lamar. It's a little bit raspy, and it's really different for some reason. Um, but I actually I like the record as a whole, so I give it a three. Lil Ray Ray. Little Ray Ray. I give it a three also. Um, I like stuff like that as well. Yeah. I like I just I just heard Kendrick Lamar today in the yeah. car. Oh yeah. And yeah. I really like it. Just so. yeah. for the first time? Yeah, I didn't know who he was. Oh, huh, interesting. But she doesn't hop on the she doesn't hop on the turntable at home no. very much. Tell me what you think of Anderson Packy. I think he's a talented dude. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I like how he mixes things up. Like songs will kind of have a little break and something else will go on for a while. And he mixes R and B with maybe some other genres, which is pretty cool. So I give it a three. Jesse. Um Jay Teddy. This is smack dab in Jesse's wheel. <laughs> I gave this record a two. Oh, troll. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, James, I actually like this album. Yeah, nice. I gave it a four. James, you I, ended up scoring a 19. We don't even listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no. uh, all right. Tiebreaker, tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. Tie all right, Kate, <laughs> your record was what? All right, I uh, brought Robert Glasper, Everything is Beautiful. Um, it's kind of his reinterpretation of Miles Davis, and it features a bunch of people that I like, like Fonte, Eric Badu, uh, Jordan and Muldra, Dro. Is your name in that too? No. Oh, that's the other one. Yeah. Um, you know, it was baby making music. Really <laughs> but I think, um, I enjoyed the music, but I would prefer the whole thing as an instrumental. I think as, mu as music, it was really good, but I thought the vocal things distracted from my overall enjoyment of it, but I gave it a two, because it did you really... You probably like the second side, because that's more instrumental. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. But I like vocal. Sarah, yeah, I really enjoyed what I heard of it. I gave it a three, and I definitely want to hear it in full. I thought it was really chill, and the I just think that reinterpretations and the, the collaborations that were done were super interesting. It's a really good concept. Brent? Yeah, this was my favorite record of the night. Um, I really like that raspy voice at the beginning of the intro song. Uh, Erica Badu, all these other uh, guests vocalist the music overall was really really good it's something i need to get so give it a four 
Little Ray Ray, what'd you think? Um, I give it a two. I <laughs> Ray Ray. did really like the Erica Badu song. That was like my favorite. Ever? Ever. No, just out of the, the songs that I heard. You're now the flower girl for the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with you about the, like, the instrumental music. Yeah. Like, I think I would have liked it better with that. Uh, tell you. I wrote music to crack open a bottle of Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. and then with some pesto linguine Picking and fresh basil and pine nuts, <laughs> grind them up. Wow. Yeah. Did, you to, did you go to the school of John? Yeah, you're <laughs> a lot of black right that was, now. That was she started out like Robert in the well, beginning, yeah. and now she's moving John, John, She doesn't have chest hair. Right? hair but hanging. I was envisioning like so fresh course. pasta and making the noodles and all that, so I liked it a lot, and I thought it was good dinner time music. Do you and Jesse make fresh pasta at home ever? No, we don't. In fact, I don't know if we could, though. Eat your pasta machine. Yeah, we, we could. Have it has to be gluten free. free. It right. gluten -free. Yeah. 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 Is it something that Jesse would do? I'll sell you one. <laughs> we bought one for Christmas. And you get a Ron Co. Because you to use it, so huh? I can sell it to you. Cool. Uh, so your score was what, Talia? A three. Jesse. Zoodles. Um, Zoodles. Zoodles. Yeah. Zoodles. It reminded me of the time I went to Tower Records. <laughs> I went in that world music room and was the only one in there. <laughs> oh, jeez. He um, <laughs> got kicked out. <laughs>
So the, the, at the last day, I was like, all right, maybe I'll do it this day, like the last day that we were there after we had put all the stuff into the car because we drove out there. And then I was like, hey, you want to go for a walk? And then my whole entire family decided they wanted to come with us. Oh, so I was like, yeah. all right, I guess I'm not doing it there. And then I was like, well, I'll just do it on her birthday because her birthday is a couple of weeks later. And uh, so her birthday comes around. It was June 23rd. And uh, <clears throat> so we wake up, we go about our day, we had to go to work that day. We came home, we were going to go to this place to eat that we had never been to before. And she decided that she changed her mind and she wanted to go to a different place, this other pizza place. And I was like, sweet, let's do it. And the funny thing is, is that that pizza place is actually right in front of the apartments that we or first originally lived at and that we had met each other while I was living in. I go there, and it was nice, and then, but it was kind of like crazy, and then, then we were talking about it, and we were talking about our apartment, because you could see our apartment, and then we went and got ice cream, and we came home, and then I was like, do you want your present? And she was like, yeah! And so, <laughs> you were excited, okay. and then um, I go and I get her present, which was a card, and some trolley sour worms because she really likes Inside them. Inside the car? No, just okay. outside so in the back. Yard to put in. So I give her the card, and the card was actually a nice card, yeah. and she reads it, and then she gets the trolley sour worms, and she looks at it, and I guess in her mind she was thinking, I was gonna get a box with a ring. So she was thinking that she was gonna have a ring somewhere. And so I was like, so we're, we're in the bedroom at this time, and I was like, so, you know, oh, you didn't get to make a wish. You didn't get to blow out anything. So I'm working up to basically do my spiel. And so she, I was like, what would you have wished for? And she's like, not really saying anything. And she gets up and she walks away and goes into the bathroom. And so I'm like, cool detail there. Well, no, she goes to the, she Flash. walks away. No, she didn't go to the bathroom. She just walks away and goes into You'll the bathroom feel bad area. About the next part yeah, and so, so she could that like, and so I'm still in the bedroom, and I'm um. And so she comes back and she falls onto the bed and she's crying and I'm like, why are you crying? And she's not saying anything and I'm like, why are you crying? And she's still not saying anything. And I'm like, Kate, why are you crying? No, oh, you said because you don't want to get married. Oh, and I said, yeah. why do you why do you say that I don't want to get married? She says, because my mom and um, Danielle both say you don't want to get married. And Brent, and Brent, Brent you oh, can't. Oh, 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 oh. So she's all yeah, sitting there and she's crying. And I'm like, why are you crying? Why? Why are you crying? And then she's like, what do you like? What do you mean? And so I'm saying why. And she's like trying to have a serious conversation with me. At this time, I don't really remember what she's saying because doing the butt I'm, dance. I'm sliding off of the bed going, why, why? And I'm sliding off hey, the why bed. Why are you sliding off the bed? Hold on. I'll and so I'm- bicycle dance. So I'm, yeah, I was gonna get up and do the bicycle. So off. I slide off to the bed. So I'm on the opposite yeah. side of the bed to the, the left side of the bed or whatever. And she's sitting on the, she's, she's like laying down like, why are you doing this? The sheets are white. Uh, yeah, white or something. So I uh, down. <laughs> no, they're still fifty. Fifty percent cotton, fifty percent polyester. So, so I get down and I'm starting to fiddle around with some stuff. And she's like, "What are you doing?" And so I'm reaching and I pull out a ring. So I pull out the ring. I and I say, "I've been wanting to do this for a really long time. Will you marry me?" And now she turns her tears into happy tears and she starts crying and Aww. she says yes. Aww. Anyways, that's our engagement story. Anyways, spring break! Spring break! Congratulations, guys. Sports! Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you, everyone, for participating. This was a blast. I'll see you all next month.